Very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to week 12 of the tutorial class. And I hope that all of you are safe. You're keeping yourself well and healthy. And at the same time that you're keeping up with CN708 together with the rest of the courses that you're doing this semester. Now, uh, in today's class, like usual, we will be going over our tutorial questions. And just a reminder, uh, please do note that your research project, okay, it's due in week 14 on the 31st of October, and it carries 15% towards your coursework. So please ensure that you are taking out adequate time to finish up with the project on time. Now, those of you uh, whom I'm still left with uh, marking your previous assessments, now these are those students who had not submitted in time and upon some approval from the head of department, you were allowed to submit your assessments. Okay, now I will be releasing your coursework come next week. Okay, uh, please do bear with me. Uh, we are loaded up at the moment and also we are often opening up the university in phases. So there's a bit of disturbances here and there, but uh, definitely next week, your marks will be up on Moodle. All right, so without further delays, let's go and discuss our tutorial questions. Now for your tutorial questions from questions number one to nine, okay, let me just quickly read them out. So uh, first question number one, what role does project management play in the system development effort? Question number two, what role does the project manager play in determining a project's success? Question number three, which phase in the system's development life cycle is the most important? Question number four, if you had to skip a phase during the development of a system, which phase would it be and why? Tricky question, question number four. Question number five, which phase is the systems development life cycle contains the most risk? Be sure to explain your answer. Question number six, which project manage management methodology would you choose to run your software development project? Question number seven, if you have started a new software development project and the project plan was using the waterfall methodology, would you remain on the project? What could you do to better prepare your project for success? Question number eight, why should end users be involved in the system development effort? Refer to agile methods and rapid application development uh, project management methods. Question number nine, why would a project manager use Gantt chart and per charts? Question number 10, what are the different types of outsourcing available for a project? So these are the questions that you will need to answer and submit your answer into the tutorial forums provided in the week 12 section of the Moodle shell. Now, just like, just like uh, uh, we had gone over last week, okay, and I will tell you again, these questions have been directly derived from your lecture notes. The main purpose is that all the key concepts are covered in your tutorial questions and that you will refer to your lecture notes. So please make a bit of effort to do so and try your very best to get work done on your tutorial questions. Now, next up is your case study and we will be discussing the case study in the class and I will be dictating the answers to you all. Now, reducing ambiguity in business requirements. The word ambi ambiguity would basically mean that you are confused. Ambiguity means confusion or perplexion or something is, uh, let's say you are confused, you're perplexed, you're confused. Another word that you can use is ambiguous. Uh, ambiguous also takes around a uh, another turn in terms of meaning. Uh, sometimes ambiguous means something that has been too shortened to extend and not explained well, or sometimes there's a lot of unnecessary information. Okay, so ambiguity means more likely something that causes confusion. The main reason projects fail is a bad business requirement. Business requirements are considered bad because of ambiguity or insufficient involvement of end users during analysis and design, okay? So generally the main uh, 
uh, focus is when you try to begin off with a project is that all your business requirements are clearly stipulated and they are clearly recognized so that you end up making the system that is actually required and not something that may not be preferred or appreciated. A business requirement is unambiguous. That means not confusing. Ambiguous is confusing. Unambiguous is not confusing. Okay, it, a business requirement is unambiguous if it has the same interpretation for all parties. So if it's not confusing, so everyone is going to understand, okay, these are the business requirements. This is what we want to achieve and this is what we should get by the end of the project. Different interpretations by different parties will usually result in unmet expectations. So if you, let's say, when, you, when we talk about different parties over here, it means about uh, the different types of stakeholders. So stakeholders are all those individuals that hold a stake or interest in your business. So if we're talking about a, let's say, a website development company, a company which develops a website, so the stakeholders in those cases would be the website designer, the website builder, probably the users, and the organization or customer which hires this particular uh, company to build websites. So if the interpretation is different by all the participants, so the expectation that is supposed to be met by the client is not met. Therefore, the entire project fails. Here's an example of an ambiguous requirement and an example of an unambiguous requirement. So ambiguous requirement, something that is confusing, the financial report should show profits in local and U.S. currencies. So you are saying that, um, you know, the financial report should show profits in the local and the U.S. currencies. Okay. Now, there could be some issues now. Okay. So if you talk about currencies, you're talking about exchange rate. So which day is exchange rate? Because the financial report is going to be, uh, right, is going to be, uh the report that is carried for to the following year. So if there is no adequate exchange rate or no adequate direction as to where to extract the exchange rate from, how would the user understand? Or how would the system be designed then? So if we try to go on the countering side, that is unambiguous requirement, the financial report must show profits in local and US currencies using the exchange rate printed in the Wall Street Journal for the last business day of the period being reported. Now, this is more clear. Why? Because US currencies, where is the exchange rate? In the Wall Street Journal. Of when? The last business day. That means if I'm going to make a report on the 2nd of January, so on the 1st of January, the exchange rate of that particular day would be used to prepare the financial report. Now, this is easy. And more likely, if this is supposed to be designed on a computer or a software system, okay, the developer would quickly go and pick up this. However, if uh, the uh, system developer is supposed to design using the ambiguous requirement, they would go and pick up the currency from almost anywhere, probably from a random website uh, on the web. And most likely, what if that particular random website makes an error with the exchange for that particular day? Okay, so Wall Street Journal is a uh, well-renowned and a uh, more likely an experienced uh, journal, uh, experienced publisher. So there are things that could be coming up would be more verified and more credible. Ambiguity is impossible to prevent completely because it is introduced into requirements in natural ways, for example. Now here are some of the ways in which we look at ambiguity, which is not meant Okay, which wasn't intended to be done, but somehow or the other, it was introduced because of the requirements. The requirement can contain technical implications that are obvious to the IT developers, but not to the customers. So you have some technical requirements, which could be seen by the IT developers, but the customers, they do not see in that particular term. For instance, if I would be making a website, I'm just giving an example here. If I would be making a website, so a customer comes in and tells me, okay, when you click on this, it should automatically go and process the payment. 
Okay, so just clicking on the button does not process the payment. There's a set of requirements, there's a set of verification needed, set of authentication needed. Moreover, there needs to be a payment engine that needs to be embedded to the website. Okay, so what a customer would see it or would not see, an IT developer would go around seeing it. Likewise, on the other way around, what a customer may would see, sometimes the IT developers do not see them. There is a second point in there. Requirements can contain business implications that are obvious to customer, but not to the IT developers. Okay, so there are some ambiguous uh, concepts whereby the customers will be able to understand, but the people who are the IT developers, they do not understand. Now, why? Because these are technical people. Sometimes technical people do not see things from a user's point of view. They are the ones who are busy designing it, while a user may say, no, 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 no. If you do it like this, I prefer something like that, all right? So that's another way of looking at it. Requirements may contain every day words whose meanings are obvious to everyone, yet different to everyone. Now, this is an example of puns, P-U-N-S. That means you can make double meaning out of things, okay? So some requirements may mean something else to a customer, something else to the stakeholders, but for the developer, it may mean something else. Moreover, let's take it the other way around. Some requirements may be using technical jargons, okay, which may be very coherent, which may be very clear to the developer, but not to everyone else, okay? So if I would tell you, if I'm making a website, I want to apply some form of search engine optimization and apply push marketing to it, have some referrals, affiliates, together with that, having a boosting system with payment engine and booking engine and trying to get things done using the most AI methods possible, artificial intelligence based methods possible. Now, these are jargons, technical jargons. So people who make websites, people who do online marketing, people who research on these things, they have a keen and a good idea of what these things are. However, if you are looking at from a basic user's point of view, these things are a no-no in their head, okay? So technical jargons, sometimes it may mean something to someone else, but to the other party, it's completely different. Now, requirements are reflections of detailed explanations that may have included multiple events, multiple perspectives, verbal rephrasing, emotion, iterative refinement, selective emphasis and body language, none of which are captured in written statements. Okay, very true. Now, when you are trying to extract a requirement, so what is a requirement? Something that needs to be there, a compulsory element in a system. So in order to extract requirements, what system analysis would do, or what uh, system analysis would be a person who basically goes and looks at the things, and then they will set out a layout, or the requirement. So what they will do is they will go and probably do their background search. They will conduct interviews. They will conduct uh, surveys. They'll give questionnaires. They'll go and observe. They'll do some research. They'll do some normal fact-finding techniques and so forth. Now, sometimes when you do observations, especially, now these are with observations, sometimes your facial expression, sometimes the way you react to things, your emotion, your body language, okay? It may tell how easy or how difficult a system is to use. For example, if you're trying to do something and it's not happening, it's frustrating, you, you would slam your finger on the mouse, you would uh, be frustrated, okay? And so forth. So these are all those things which are not listed in written statements. They are something that could be observed. Okay, so in other words, when requirements are stipulated, these things needed to be well taken care of. If not, this is where the ambiguous concepts of listing down business and system requirements come up. Now, tips for reviewing business requirements. So these are some of the general tips that one may use when enlisting business requirements. When reviewing business requirements, always look for the following words to help reduce ambiguity dramatically, okay? In other words, if you are reviewing business requirements, try to use some of these words, which reduces confusion, which uh, eliminates uh, a blur kind of situation, okay? Blur something's not clear. 
and an or have well-defined meanings and ought to be completely unambiguous, yet they are often understood only informally and interpreted inconsistently. For example, consider the following statement, the alarm must ring if the button T is pressed and if button F is pressed. This statement may be intended to mean that to ring the alarm, both buttons must be pressed, or it may be intended to mean that either one can be pressed. A statement like this should never appear in a requirement because the potential for misinterpretation is too great. Now, let's just stop here and, and let's go and read that example. The alarm must ring if button T is pressed and if button F is pressed, okay? So that means T and F press. Now, this is confusing. Sometimes people may not understand. Or sometimes if I say button T is pressed or button F is pressed, that means either of it could be pressed. Now, this may sound confusing. At first, when I read it, it even sounded confusing to me as well. Okay. So such kind of statements can be taken out. A preferable approach is to be very explicit. For example, the alarm must ring if both T and F are pressed simultaneously. So same thing written in a much more uh, unambiguous or coherent way. That means clear way. The alarm should not ring in any other circumstance. Now always, the next point, always might really mean most of the time. In which case it could be more explicit, for example, the statement, we always run reports A and B together, could be challenged with. In other words, there is never a circumstance in which you would run A without B and B without A. If you build a system with always a requirement, you are actually building the system never to run report A without report B. If a user suddenly wants report B without report A, you will need to make a significant system change. Now, I hope you understood what it meant. Now, what it meant is sometimes when you use the word always, always means more likely, uh, explicitly it would mean like compulsory, always, okay? All the time. So the statement given at the very beginning is we always, this particular statement, okay, this particular statement here, we always run reports A and B together would mean both these reports are run together. So if a system developer is supposed to design this, so he or she would design a system whereby A and B needs to be run together, not A separately and B separately, okay? So it needs, or whereas a user may mean, okay, we can or we should have the report separately A, B, I and B separate reports could be pulled out together or both of them combined as well, okay? So explicitly how you always, uh, always is used. Never might mean rarely in which case it should be more explicit. For example, the statement, we never run reports A and B in the same month could be challenged with. So that means that if a if I see that A has been run, I can be absolutely certain that no one will run B again. If you build a system that supports a never requirement, the system users can never perform that requirement. For example, the system would never allow a user to run reports A and B in the same month. So no matter what the circumstances. So always and never quite contra or quite opposite to one another. Okay, so when you are using the word always, you need to be careful and list down significantly what always mean. Likewise, never. When you are using the word never, never means like no way, no way, never. Okay, not in any possible way. Okay, so uh, never needs to be very carefully used as well. Now, boundary conditions are statements about the line between true and false and do and do not. These statements may or may not be meant to include endpoints. For example, we want to use method X where there are up to 10 pages, but method Y otherwise, if you were building the system, would you include page 10 in method X or in method Y? The answer to this question will vary causing an ambiguous business requirement. Okay, 
So what happens in this case is when you are using the conditions true and false, again, you need to be very, very specific. So if you want an example is given, we want to use method X when there are up to 10 pages. So when you say up to, does it include 10 or is it without 10? Up to. So up to would mean if we reach page nine, so and you finish page nine, so you're going up to page nine. It means you're going up to page 10 also, okay? But however, if you go and uh, want to get something done till the end of page 10, so up to can also be included in there. So what you can say in the best possible case is you want to, in, you want to put a requirement in such a way whereby you would say, all right, we want to use method X where there is an inclusive of 10 pages or whereby 10 is equals to true, something like that, okay? So being specific would make the work easy for a systems developer. Now, questions. Why are ambiguous business requirements the leading cause of system development failures? Okay, so question is very plain and simple. So let's go and answer them. So I'll dictate the answers. The most common reason systems fail, the most common reason systems fail is because is because the business requirements are either missing is because the business requirements are either missing or incorrectly gathered or incorrectly gathered during the analysis phase. During the analysis phase, full stop. The business requirements drive the entire system The business requirements drive the entire system. Full stop. If they are not accurate or complete, if they are not accurate or complete, The system will not be successful. The system will not be successful. Full stop. So to answer the question why business, why ambiguous business requirements, the leading cause of system development failure. The most common reasons systems fail is because the business requirements are either missing or incorrectly gathered during the analysis phase. First off, the business requirements drive the entire system. If they are not accurate or complete, the system will not be successful. Question number two, why do the words and and or tend to lead to ambiguous requirement? Why do the words and and or lead to tend to lead to ambiguous requirements? Okay, let's start writing the answer. And and or put down and in uh, quotes and or or in quotes as well. 
have well-defined meanings and an or have well-defined meanings. And ought to be completely unambiguous. And ought, O-U-G-H-T, ought to be completely unambiguous. Semicolon. Yet they are often understood only. Yet they are often understood only informally informally and interpreted inconsistently and interpreted inconsistently full stop for example comma consider the statement for example comma consider the statement okay Opening quote, the alarm must ring if button P is pressed. The alarm must ring if button T is pressed. And if button F is pressed. And if button F is pressed. Close the quote. This statement may be intended to mean this statement may be intended to mean that to ring the alarm, comma, that to ring the alarm, comma, Both buttons must be pressed. Both buttons must be pressed. Or It may be intended to mean, or it may be intended to mean that either one can be pressed, that either one can be pressed, full stop. Okay, let me repeat the answer. So why do the words and and or tend to lead to ambiguous requirements? And and or have well-defined meanings and ought to be completely unambiguous. Yet, they are often understood only informally and interpreted inconsistently. For example, consider the statement. In quotes, the alarm must ring if button T is pressed and if button F is pressed, 
close the quote, this statement may be intended to mean that to ring the alarm, both buttons must be pressed, or it may be intended to mean that either one can be pressed. Last question. Question number three. What is wrong with the following business requirement? The system must support employee birthdays since every employee always has a birthday every year. Let me repeat that. What is wrong with the following business requirements? The system must support employee birthdays since every employee always has a birthday every year. Now you can pick out what is a problem. What is a problem? Not everyone has a birthday every year. Well, you are supposed to have one, but what about those who are born in a leap year? Okay, so this is where this is wrong with the system requirements. So let's go and write this down. Every employee does not have a birthday every year. Every employee does not have a birthday every year. Full stop. Some employees could be born on a leap year. Some employees could be born on a leap year. and therefore may not have a birthday every year. May not have a birthday every year, full stop. If you build a system with this requirement, if you build the system with this requirement, comma, You will need to find, you will need to find a way to cater for all employees. You will need to find a way to cater for all employees. Full stop. So this finishes up with our tutorial for week 12. It was a very short tutorial. Uh, I think it's good when it's short. Okay, why? Because uh, probably the class becomes more interesting when it's short. If it's too lengthy, it becomes very monotonous over time. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, this is tutorial nine. Please, those of you who are yet to answer tutorial nine on your discussion forum, do make an effort to answer the questions and I should be able to correspond it to the answers sometimes by next week. You'll be able to get the simple answers on the forum itself. So thank you very much everyone for coming in and taking out your time to attend today's class. Those of you who will be joining us later with uh, the recording, uh, I also appreciate you taking out your time, trying to get everything sorted for yourself few more weeks to go, okay? You just have three more weeks. This is week 12, week 13, 14, 15, three weeks to go, and you're done with the semester. Not forgetting you still have your final examinations left, okay? So everyone take care, stay safe. Uh, we'll catch up next week, Wednesday in our lecture class. By the way, next week's lecture is the very last set of lecture and lecture notes that you'll be receiving. Uh, week after, we will start with our revision for CIM708. Till then, I wish you all the very best. Please ensure to attempt your lecture-based quizzes and please do not forget to attempt your and attempt or start work with the research work or the research project. All right, everyone, take care, stay safe. Inaka.